thanks for everyone to coming here. Uh, so glad we are taking your lunch time. I hope you are either very hungry or you are done with your lunch. But uh, thank you for being here. I'll introduce myself. I'm Manish Harsh. I'm a global DevRel for and strategic alliances. I work very closely with Databricks teams. Um, here, my colleague Joy. Yep. Hello. I'm Joey Conway. So I help with product management for some of our deep learning software. So I'll cover a bit of our work on large language models, as well as our inference, NVIDIA inference microservice, or NIMS. Yeah. Thank you. So, so let me, before that, you know, I'll focus on how NVIDIA's AI microservices going to help you d develop and deploy um, generative AI co-pilot applications using the CUDA infrastructure, CUDA-based GPU infrastructure. So just a quick high-level agenda. We'll go through our development phases of Gen AI. We'll talk about NIM, NVIDIA Inference Microservices, what you can do with it, and why we are here with NIMS, and how do you really enjoy it. <coughs> so you, we all have kind of learned and understood this thing, right? Means how we have been doing this for years. <coughs> Large language models has been helping us uh, doing all the conversions, and you, you've been, this, this has been happening for probably quite a long time. But the era has come where you know, the explosion, experimentation, and production are right here with us. And I'm not talking about decades ago. I'm talking like literally 2022, 2023, 2024. So let's talk about uh, what happened in 2022. Uh, we had a launch of ChatGPT, great friends to us, and we just logged the paradigm shift of AI. Uh, attracted over 100 million users, you know, that was an eye-opener for everyone. AI is right here, and let's do the, some uh, transformation. We brought the AI to everyone. Everyone was using it, enjoying it, and thinking through what can we do now. Then came the 2023, when the era of world exploration. Uh, you know, enterprises started doing POCs, experimentations, and they were diving deep into what they can do, how they can do the ML ops, and they start understanding how they can stitch it all together. Um, this laid the foundation for the new digital, infra, you know, uh, digital transformation we all have been talking about for years. What's going to happen in 2024? Is it, we believe it's AI in production, right? And organizations are ready to invest. They have a budget. They have, they have thought through the, the roadmaps, and they're going into production with all the AI work they have done. Uh, they are focusing on the enterprise scale infrastructure. They are thinking through their clusters. They are thinking through all the uh, full stack they require in order to take the AI to production. Now, <clears throat> the, this is all driving the innovation growth and every new thing coming up has to have an AI flavor to it. And we, we are doing our two cents. We want to make sure that our partners are enabled, have the right tools and software to make this happen. So and NIMS is our strategy to make that happen. So <clears throat> let me walk you through a little bit of under the hood uh, NVIDIA name. What is name? Name is basically a, we have, we have done all the complex work for you to make life simple. We have all the standard APIs at the top, whether it's text, speech, video, 3D, biology. These, these APIs will make it easy for developers to integrate functionalities of AI uh, and without minimal effort. So that's one piece. Second piece is the Triton Inference Server, which is NVIDIA's uh, flagship. Uh, we, have, we drive everything through this, and it has support for QDF, whether it's a GPU data frame library for data manipulation, CV CUDA, uh, computer vision CUDA libraries, DALI, the, the NVIDIA data loading library for data processing, Nickel, uh, NVIDIA collective communications library for multi-GPU and multi-node. Uh, also has post-processing decoders for handling output out efficiency. Everything supported in there, uh, ensured. Third point with the cloud native stack. NIM leverages the cloud native stack, GP operator, network operators, helps you seamless deployment on various Kubernetes flavors. Enterprise management, we have to make sure the enterprise management pieces have been taken care, uh, whether it's health check, identity management, metrics, monitoring, uh, secrets management, um, all the prerequisites for uh, building an enterprise-grade AI application. Uh, we support all the Kubernetes, and they will make sure that uh, scaling and orchestration of AI workloads is seamless for you. 
TensorRT and TensorRT LLM being supported, um, optimized for performance, and it supports KubeLAS, KubeDNN, in-flight batching, memory optimization, uh, FP8 quantization as well for reduced precision computations. And above all, we have the optimized, optimized model deployment for single GPU, multi-GPU, uh, or uh, multi-node. You can also do customization cache. NIM offers a customization cache for specific, specific needs, whether P-tuning, LoRa, model weights, uh, and underneath it's a CUDA, our foundation. Uh, it's the foundation we have CUDA which provides the GPU accelerated acceleration necessary for uh, the high-performance computing. In summary, NVIDIA NIM provides com comprehensive solution. Uh, so to, to uh, compile this all, you can, you can take names, you can deploy it on any cloud, on-prem, or the way you want to use it. Um, we are making it all simple, focused on developer-first philosophy, which we always had. Uh, we'll make life easy for developers. That's the goal. We'll take questions once we are done with the, but let me just run through this last slide before I hand over to my colleague. What we are doing here is uh, we're building a, we call it API catalog. Uh, all the foundation models uh, being nimified and made available for developers to pull it from uh, our API catalog. You go to ai.nvidia.com and you will be able to find all these models which are nimified, uh, performance optimized with all the things I just mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, we'll stand behind it. And this is our partner ecosystem working with us. <clears throat> I'll hand over to my colleague, Joey, for taking you deep into how it helps the LLM development specifically. Okay. Great. <coughs> Thanks, Manish. So I'm gonna walk through an example here with Llama 3, our first NIM we released last week. I'm gonna walk through how we built it, a little bit about how it works, and how you can use it and get started with it. So with Llama 3 specifically, we spend quite a bit of time focused on both ease of use the enterprise support aspects, as well as the latency and throughput. And so in this slide, we're showing the throughput advantage of taking what we call NIM off, so referring to open source software that people can go and grab and download today and get up and running with, versus using the NVIDIA optimized software stack that's present inside NIM. And in this case, we're looking at Llama 3, we're running the 8B model, and we're looking at this idea that in the generative AI world, the advantage here is the more content we can generate, the better outcomes we can have. And our goal is to generate as much content as we can in as little amount of time. The measurement here we're using is tokens a second, which is another way to say the amount of text that Llama 3 can generate. And so in a world where your outcomes are either things like agents or retrieval systems, where you're generating content, they could be classification, summarization, all sorts of generative tasks. The goal here is to provide as much throughput as possible. In this example, we're showing about a 3x throughput improvement, and we also have great uh, time to first token and great inner token latency as well. So we have those accounted for as well. To go into a little bit more depth here of what it would look like to actually run this software stack, we've spent a bit of time making sure that it should be quite convenient and simple. The way we've structured it is we package all the components that Manish referred to into a Docker container. So we have years and years of NVIDIA libraries packaged up in there with an opinionated view of how best to run the software stack for Llama 3. In there, the commands are fairly simple, meaning it's a simple a Docker pull, Docker run. And in the Docker run, we have our base container image. That would be a set of common software like Manish referred to. And then on top of that, we have specific configs for each model. So there'll be separate NIMs per model, and this layer at the top, this model-specific config image, will vary a bit based on the model. And this is where we spend time optimizing it for each specific model, its capabilities, so things like different context lengths, things like different prompt templates, as well as which GPUs are optimized on, and making sure that things run functionally across all of NVIDIA's GPUs. And then you can see on the left, we have some bullets here. Tactically, it detects the hardware it's running on. We spend time optimizing TensorRT engines for NVIDIA GPUs. This software stack is aware of those. It grabs the latest and loads those up to ensure that you get the best performance at runtime by running the simple command at the top. 
A little bit more complicated example here of a feature we're quite excited about is the idea that as people deploy more and more large language models, they get to the point where they want to enhance the capabilities of the base large language model. And one of the best ways to do that is using a technique called LoRa, which allows us to take the base model, which you can see here in GPU memory in the middle, the gray box, the foundation model weights, this could be Llama 3, say the 8B or the 70B model. And then what we're able to do is we're able to train specific LoRa adapters that can be great at unique domains. So it could be something like you might have a customer service LoRa adapter. In this example, we have things like code generation, support queries. You could also have it looking at uh, in a RAG type of workflow as well. And as you train these different adapters, which could be trained in Nemo framework from NVIDIA or in Hugging Face's PEF library, as you train these adapters, what we do at runtime dynamically is in the GPU memory, you'll see the blue, purple, and red. Those represent the LoRa weights that have been trained in advance, but they each correspond to a specific use case. So as a query comes in, say for blue or purple or red, we can send those queries specifically to the LoRa adapters in GPU memory. And at the bottom, you see the cache where we can move things in and out of GPU memory and host memory. So we make them quickly available. We do this so we can scale up to many different LoRa adapters efficiently at runtime. The advantage here is there's one base model, many LoRa adapters, and we can do all of this inside a GPU. The also the upside is that a lot of this uh, complexity of managing it in this caching system, we've optimized that with a lot of work in CUDA, but it's abstracted away for the end user. So the end user would look at the input queries and the adapters that they've provided. Everything else is handled inside the NIM. To review what we say when we refer to enterprise support, it's essentially this idea that we have across our software stack, and so you can imagine these NIMs across the top for reasoning or speech, um, biomedical. We support community models. I'll, I'll have a bit more on the next slide, many of them. And then we have models from NVIDIA, and we also support enterprises creating their own custom models. But inside of all that, we have NVIDIA AI Enterprise where we spend time making sure that we have CVE patches, we have priority bug fixes, and we can hold the software stack stable so there's a production branch that can be put into production and deployment environment. Separately, we have a monthly feature branch that can be used as well to make sure we get the latest features, techniques, and models out. So both of these are available under NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which allows us to provide a, a, much, um, a much more integrate level of support than you would see in something like open source, where it's kind of best effort. A quick overview of where we're going with the NIMs. So I spent time talking about Llama 3, which is a very specific NIM we made available last week, the 8 billion and the 70 billion version of it. Going forward though, we have many NIMs we're working on. Some of these are from NVIDIA and some of these are from our partners. And you'll see the Databricks one up there in kind of center middle under language NIMs. And so we've partnered with them to make sure there's a NIM available there. There are more in here, things from Google, from Mistral, from Meta, from Microsoft. And then you can see moving to the right, we have many other NIMs across many different domains. And so NVIDIA will continue to work with our partners to help expand this, as well as make sure all of these get the same optimized treatment and the same easy to use experience. One thing I, I do wanna announce that we have newly available is a developer license to access these NIMs. And what that means is that when you sign up for NVIDIA's developer program, you're able to get free access to all these NIMs. It's, it's available starting now. And the idea is that with this, you're able to get access, grab these NIMs, be able to set them up, run them, test them, experiment with them, and get them ready. So you're comfortable with them, as well as being able to take advantage of all their features for when you're ready to go to production. Where to get started? There's two main places. We have ai.nvidia.com, which serves as our front door. Essentially meaning, if you wanna go find out how we built the NIMS, what they're great at, um, the latest news about them, the use cases, who we've partnered with, the ecosystem updates, as well as the latest and documentation resources, this is the best place to go to get all that information. And then more specifically for developers, a great starting point is our API catalog. So in build.nvidia.com, we make all of the NIMS available in a cloud-hosted API so that it's easy to get started experimenting and learning how they work. And then when you're ready, 
you're able to download them and take them into your production environment. And the last slide here, I'll walk through that workflow in a little bit more detail. So on the far left, you can go to build.nvidia.com and experience the models. There's a GUI interface there as well, so it's quite simple. You can type in text prompts, you can upload images for image prompts, and you can start experimenting with these models. We even have things in there like drug discovery with protein prediction. So as you go there, you can experience them, you can see how well the accuracy works, you can get a feel for the latency, how quick it is, how responsive they are. And then when you're ready to start prototyping with them, you're able to sign up and get access to an API key. And with the API key, you're then able to, from a local workstation or on-premise or in a cloud instance, you're able to make calls out to these NIMs, the exact same NIMs you see running in the UI, and be able to get responses back in a programmatic manner. And with that, you're able to prototype and build applications. And then the last stage here is as you're able to get more familiar with them and experience with the APIs and building with them, you're then able to deploy these exact same NIMs. So you're able to download the Docker container, the same that we're running. You're able to download that same container and take it and deploy it in your environment. And at this stage, the, all the experiments and the client applications you've written, the only change you would make is the URL path. And so you change it from our prototyping playground at build.mvda.com to your production environment. And that is it. So I think we can take questions.